So welcome everyone. This is the very first lesson of our Japanese basics. We'll be using the Japanese basics lessons that are inside of Renshu. And those are usually ones that you might take, you know, just a few minutes to go through uh, on your own. We'll be taking an hour thereabouts and we'll be doing more of a deep dive into it. We'll have some uh, opportunities to practice if you'd like. You know, if you'd like to try it, although, you know, you're not required to do anything you don't want to do. And of course, uh, if you have questions at any time, you know, just dump them out into the events chat. And I will be happy to answer them or someone else will answer them, you know, whenever we uh, have a chance to do so. But let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just in case you don't know, if you haven't seen this page before, these are the lessons that pop up when you do the grammar schedules in Renshu. But if you ever need to access this in the future, it's here in the menu under resources. It's the Japanese basics entry. And we are getting started with the first one, not the hiragana and katakana. That's not really something that you can teach. You just get it done on your own. So we will be jumping into the first lesson of building sentences. And there's, since this is our first lesson, we're going to be talking a bit about a bit of, I'm not going to say theory, but about the mindset of approaching Japanese, what I feel works better than not. You know, it might not be perfect for you, but hopefully this will, this will help out. And one of the first things that before we even step into this, this desk that you see on the screen is about understanding grammar. And grammar is often one of the things that people say, it, it, it kills me. I just, I can't get grammar. I can put, I can get the words, you know, I, I might be learning the kanji characters and I can understand those. But when it comes to grammar, I just fall apart. And one of the reasons that one second. Uh, one of the reasons that we don't, that we have so many problems is that typically when you start a language, you, you know, before you get to grammar, you're going to pick up some words and words are basically units of information. You know, you learn the word, for example, this might be the first word you learn is Nihongo. And you say, oh, Nihongo, that's Japanese, the, the Japanese language. And that's it. You're done. You fully understand that word for many of the words that you get. And if someone were to say, hey, how do you say Japanese in Japanese? You would say, oh, it's Nihongo. And vice versa. If they say, what's Nihongo? You'd say, oh, that means Japanese, the language. It's a very simple give and take with the information. And most people will take that and they'll try to use that in approaching grammar and it doesn't work especially with japanese and what i mean by that is that when you start to look at these sentences i want you to as much as you can it, it's a hard impulse to fight down but as much as you can try not to focus on each single word or particle or whatever it is in the sentence and trying to assign some specific meaning or translation to it. This is what trips up a lot of people. In that with Japanese, you're going to find out that a lot of the uh, Japanese that we're going to learn, it doesn't have a translation. A lot of Japanese has elements. A lot of them are called particles. Some of you may have already heard of these. They don't have meanings often. Sometimes they do. And when they do have meanings, they're often not one, but they could be one of 10 or 15 different words in English or whatever your native language is. And so instead, so how, if we can't translate the sentences, you know, when we're learning grammar, what, what can we do? And as you see with today's lesson, I really emphasize that you push on patterns, that you look at the sentences, especially the basics as patterns, where if you have this followed by this and then this, it means this as a whole. And I think that will make this a lot easier for you. So with that in mind, let's jump in. 
We're starting with our very basic sentences. These are sentences that you might use if you were introducing yourself or, you know, if you were based, you know, giving simple descriptions about someone or something. And we're going to start with the des verb. Now, it's kind of a special verb and it, it is used in different ways compared to every other verb in the language. We usually try to link it to the, the be verb that we have in English. That's the is, am, are, was, were. You know, it is most tightly correlated with des. However, you're going to see both because of the placement in the sentence as well as the usage that you can't just say, oh, this means be. This is the be verb. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And although some of you might not like this, we're going to look at this as if it is a math problem. That's actually a good way to look at it. So this is our first pattern. This is the just it's the only one we're going to do today. And this is the first sentence pattern that by the end of today, I think you'll be able to use, hopefully, if this is something that's new to you. And I want you to look at, and I'm typing it out on the channel as well, just in case uh, you don't have the stream in front of you. Look at this pattern. I don't want you to focus too much on that second, that, that first, the second character, the first hiragana character that's in there for now. We'll talk about it later. And as the weeks go by, you'll get a stronger feel for what that means. But just like when someone is teaching you how to drive a car, they don't explain everything and the deeper mechanics behind what you're doing when you push your, you know, push your foot down, what that's actually doing inside the car. They just say, you should push your foot down when there's a red light. You know, you should put the brakes on. And I'd like you to look at this as a set. So we have this a wa be this. And that wa might be setting off some alarms. You're thinking, I just finished my hiragana and that's definitely not wa. That's the ha in the ha hi hu he ho row of hiragana. Why is it wa? Don't worry about that. We'll get to that before the end of the hour. But when you see this sentence and when you're trying to put the sentence together, this is what I'd like you to think about is this. A is B. A equals B. This is a sentence for when you're taking something, A, and you're applying something else to it. You're saying, hey, this A, whether it's me or him or that cat over there or Godzilla walking down the street, that thing. Here's some more information about it. I'm going to talk about that. So when you're using the A, W, B, D, S, all you're saying, A is B. And depending on what A happens to be, it might be A, R, B. A is, A, R, you know, it might be singular, it might be plural. But one of the nice things you'll see with Japanese is that we don't really deal with singular and plural nouns. And the verbs do not change depending on if it's dealing with one or multiple things. If it's first person, that's the I. Second person, you, third person, none of that matters. So this one pattern that we have in front of us, we're going to be able to use for a huge range of things. And even when you get into more complex Japanese, it's often this sentence that's in front of you. You know, A is more than one word, B is something bigger, but it's this basic construct. A is B. Or maybe A and B. Or maybe A R B. If you're, if you're putting a translation on top of it. Now, we're going to get to some examples in just a second, but let me point something out. The verbs in Japanese come at the end of the sentence or the end of a clause, if you know what a clause is. They're always at the end. And this is something that breaks people's brains a little bit when you first get into Japanese. And you'll get used to it. And again, at this level, I don't want you to have to think about, okay, what comes first, what comes second? I want you to see this today. I didn't learn the be verb. I don't want you to think that way. I hope that you think today I learned the a wa b des sentence pattern. And if I can understand that as a single pattern, I can use it. And you definitely will be able to. So as I said, this is a, a little special thing. I'm just going to leave it there for now. 
We're just going to consider that it's the ha hiragana character. It You read it as wa, but we'll talk about that before the day is over. Not too much at once. So let's get going. In these spots, you know, the A and the B, we can put different things in here. Now the A is always going to be a noun. It's always going to be a noun. A noun is, if you're, you're not crazy about those grammar words, a noun is a person, a place, a thing, an event, an idea. Those are nouns. And since you're probably going to use this when you introduce yourself, one of the most common nouns that comes in this spot is watashi. And watashi means, does anyone want to answer that for me? What does watashi mean? One of those first words that you learn, it means I. It can mean me if it comes somewhere else in the sentence, but you know what? Let's not worry about that. It's I. So, watashi wa, and I hear some katakana, watashi wa kao desu. I am kao. Now, that's not me. I'm, I'm Michael. Uh, Kao is our mascot, and so if you know our mascot was uh, talking, it would probably say this. Watashi wa Kao this. And in this, as it's you know, let's go back to that math. You know what's it doing? It is saying I equals Kao. That first word that we have and that second word, they're the same thing. You know, the first word is being talked about by the second one. In this case, it's exactly the same. I am Kao, Kao is I. And you're just linking those two together. You're putting an equal sign in between the two of them. And if I was doing it for myself, you know, I, when I first went to Japan, I actually would type my name out this way, Michael. This is the more common way that people you know, if your name is Michael and you tell someone this in, in Japanese, they, they will call you this. They will say Maikuru. And for the first several years that I was in Japan, I went by Maikuru. So when I would introduce myself, I would say this. I've lost track of the number of times I've said this in my life. Watashi wa Maikuru desu. And do you know what they would say? And when I say they, I mean small children because I was a teacher. Uh, for elementary school and middle school for many years, they would say, oh, you're, you're Michael Jackson. And the first time I laughed, the second time I laughed, every time after the third time, it just, you know, it made me cry a little bit. And so one day I said, this Mikeru thing is not going to work for me. And these days I, I reinvented my name Try to get a bit closer to the English pronunciation, and I say, "Watashi wa Michael." Yes, I am. I am Michael. And uh, let me take the time to point out that if you're in the spot where you're trying to figure out what's, you know, how do I write my name in katakana, you know, what's the best way to write my name, the answer is it's whatever you want. There's no book of names where they're going to look up this foreign name and say, oh, your name is written this way. Thanks to, you know, famous people from English speaking countries, there are many names that typically will be written in one way or another. But even with even that being the case, there's no rule that says that that's, you know, the way that you have to use. So if you're ever worrying about how you should write your name and maybe you don't care for the way that you've chosen or that someone else told you, you can change it and you know no one's going to stop you. So let's come back to this sentence. Watashi wa Michael this. I'm Michael. So although a lot of the people in the channel I, I've spoken with you all before, uh, let's pretend like it's our first time and you are, you know, describing yourself and just you're giving us your name. Uh, what would you type? Try try typing this out. This is one of our practice times and during our events. Practice is not required. You're not going to get called out if you don't type anything. We're not going to stand you up in front of everyone and lecture you if you made a mistake. There's none of that. But if you'd like to have a chance to try, this is the perfect time to do it. And, you know, you have 90% of the sentence here already. You're all a watashi. You're all going to use that wa. You're all going to use the des. All you have to do is drop that name right in there. 
And so if you feel like it, uh, please let us know. What's, what's your name? And again, if you don't want to answer, you don't have to. And likewise, the way that you type your answer, it's totally up to you. Uh, some people will stick, I'm going to stick with katakana and hiragana because I, you know, I'm teaching this basics lesson. If you want to use kanji, you know some kanji, you want to show off because, you know, who doesn't? Then go for it. And if you don't have the Japanese installed on your computer and you want to use just, you know, if you want to type, if you want to type like this, go for it. That's fine. Whatever works best for you. So uh, welcome, uh, those of you that typed out your answers. It's nice to meet you. Now, I'd like you to try, you don't uh, don't need to jump out on the mic for this, but just you can say it silent, silently to yourself. Uh, try saying this. Try saying watashi wa and then your name, whatever your name happens to be. So if it was me, I'd say silently watashi wa Michael this. Try saying it. Try it out for size. You know, don't worry about if your pronunciation is right or wrong. Just, you know, give it a shot. Try it out. And once you've done so, listen to what I say one more time and see if there's something that you catch. You know, we're, we're starting off with the basic sentences, but most people like to speak. You know, they, they want to learn Japanese to, to speak it. And so I'm going to be giving you hints, you know, and pointers for things as we as we go along. So listen to what I say one more time. Watashi wa Michael this. And we already noted that the wa here, we'll talk about it more after, but the wa here is written ha, but it's pronounced wa. This seems confusing, but something that once you get it down, you'll never make the mistake again. Now listen to the last word of what I said and see if you notice anything strange or what comes across as strange to you. Watashi wa Michael des. Let me say just the last word. Des. So a couple of you jumped on it. You know, if this there's very few times I feel romaji is a useful useful thing, but in this case it does help. When there's a lot of sounds in Japanese and that, that actually sound a bit different when you use them. And the su is one of them. Su is almost, uh, not almost, depending on what comes after it or what doesn't come after it, it, it sounds as if it's not the full su that's silent, it's the u, that last, that vowel sound on the end just kind of disappears. And so with des, you never say desu, except for certain situations, which I'll mention in a second. Typically, 99% of the time that you're speaking, you'll, you won't say, watashi wa maiko desu. You'll say, watashi wa maiko desu. And it sounds like, as FIFO pointed out, it's a, like a de S sound. Michael, this. And this is standard Japanese. You know, this is the way Japanese is spoken. Now, if you're wondering when do you actually use the su in desu, uh, there's two times I hear it pop up. You might hear it in songs. And in songs, a lot of rules are broken, pronunciation rules. And it's to keep, you know, a certain beat or rhythm going on. And there's some artistic license involved in singing to where they say, I want to say it this way. And so sometimes you'll hear someone say desu if they're singing. And I won't punish you by trying to sing myself. The other time that you will hear it is on the phone. And to be honest, I'm not quite sure why this is done. My suspicion is that it was done to make the speaking more clear when telephone lines weren't that clear. And I'm talking about, you know, decades ago. 
And so back when it wasn't a crystal clear reception, even now, sometimes it's not great, you will hear, for example, instead of arigato gozaimasu, you know, it's that same thing. There's that, instead of arigato gozaimasu, you just say mas. But if you hear someone speak on the phone, even now, and especially in a more business, uh, for example, if you're working at a school, as I did, and you were answering the phone and, you know, a parent was calling or someone that was going to visit the school, you would often hear people say, Arigato gozaimasu. And they'd hit that U really hard. Same with the des. And so I'm not quite sure why that is more common, but on the phone, you often do hear it. So let's jump back to it. We have this A wabidas. Now, let me jump out. Uh, let me do this one. The nice thing is that, let me type it out for you one more time. We're working with A wabidas. And you know that A is a noun. That A is going to stick around and be a noun. But the second one can be a noun in the same way that we said, I am Michael. You know, Michael's a noun. It's a name. We can also put adjectives in there. Now, we will talk about adjectives in more detail later on. But for now, there's probably one or two adjectives that you know, if not a few more. And you're free to stick those in there as well. So I... I'm all about, you know, self-confidence and also I like to make a fool of myself in front of my kids and my kids' friends. And so uh, it is not beyond, uh, beside me to say, Watashi wa kawaii desu. I'm cute. And you say that to a six-year-old uh, Japanese child and they'll love it because they say, what crazy adult would say that I am cute? Especially in Japan where you're so... Uh, you know, you don't push yourself up, you're, you know, you're so self-deferential. But here, you know, why not? Why not? So you could say, watashi wa kawaii desu. Or if, you know, if you are happy, or let's go with that one word that we all learn, but we can never quite figure out what it means initially, genki. Watashi wa genki desu. And you can stick adjectives in here as well and if the only adjectives you have learned are colors then sure say you're red i don't know you fell into a bucket of paint so you can put adjectives in here you can stick nouns in here like a name you can also say you know you can say something like this Watashi wa neko desu. I'm a cat. You know, sometimes I wish I could be a cat and not deal with all the human stuff, but, you know, you can try saying this. And you might be thinking, this is silly. This is, this is in the chapter. I'm never going to use this sentence. Watashi wa neko desu. But let me give you a piece of advice that has proven the test of time. I started studying Japanese about 24 years ago, a, a crazy amount of time ago. Uh, that might be longer than you've been alive for some of the listeners. And when I was in university, that's when I started, most of my time in university, I, I just can't remember. You know, I can remember broad strokes, fun times I had, larger events, but those day-to-day -day things, you know, I can't remember what someone said a week ago much less 24 years ago. But I do remember very vividly that someone, the teacher was asking us one day in Japanese, you know, a warm up practice in the, in the morning. And the teacher said in Japanese, what did you eat for breakfast? And someone said, I ate cereal or I ate pancakes. And then the teacher changed and said, what did you drink? And someone, just made a mistake, their brain, you know, you're always preparing those questions, answers in your head. So if the teacher calls you, you're ready, right? And someone must have still been stuck on that, that eat verb. So they didn't hear the teacher say drink, 
where they heard drink, but their brain was still half in the eat mode. So in Japanese, they said, I drink fish. This single sentence is still in my head 24 years later. Similarly, uh, we were later on, we were studying kanji, you know, the, those Chinese characters. And I, the teacher would put a, a character up and I'll show you some of you, uh, you probably don't know kanji yet, which is fine, but the teacher put this word up and they said, what, how do you read this? And it was my turn and I couldn't read it. I couldn't remember that kanji. And my answer was with something along the lines of this. I said, "Oboeteimasen," which means I don't remember. And those of you that know that kanji will know that it is read "oboeru." It's the kanji or the word to mean to remember. And so I couldn't remember the kanji, but in answering, I don't remember this. I used the word that was right in front of me. And in that moment, I never forgot that character ever again. And so I've told, I've been a teacher for many years and I've always told my students, you should be silly. Silly is not reserved for children or reserved for outside of school. Silly should be embraced in learning. The sillier it is, the more you're going to remember it. And the this is the famous sentence for those of us who have lived in Japan and who have taught in Japanese schools, taught English. For many years, the very first sentence that was ever taught in Japanese, uh, many Japanese textbooks, you know, teaching English was, this is a pen. And they'd say, kore wa pen desu. You know, they'd give you the English, they translate it into Japanese. And so many people were taught this as one of the first sentences they'd learn that it's almost, you know, it's ingrained in, in Japanese people's heads, not because it's useful, because when's the last time you said this is a pen? Most people don't have, you know, a problem understanding whether or not something is a pen. But they gave this boring sentence and as teachers, we saw it so many times and we thought, oh, this is ridiculous. So I'd much prefer that you give answers that are nonsensical in content, but follow the grammar. That way you're learning the grammar and you have something that might stick inside of your head. So I'd like us all to try practicing one more time. And we've done names. And, you know, I don't think you're all going to change your name. But what else can we put in there? Can you think of something? that may or may not be true that you could stick in there. You know, I did watashi wa neko desu. I'm a cat. So let's pretend for a minute you're not a human and you're not a chat GPT bot that's pretending to be a human. Let's pretend you're something else. It can be an animal. It can be a household object. You can be a bus if you want. You can be a bus. What are you? Give it a shot. Let's use this A wa B does formation and try it out. So let me know, how are you feeling today? Are you feeling a little bussy today? Are you feeling like a cat? Are you a pen? <laughs> are you watashi wa pen des? What are you? And you know, let's keep it, uh, for those of you that are just getting started, you know, some of you that know a little bit more, you're free to use more Japanese, but you're getting started, just keep those four words. And, you know, three of them I gave you and just drop that one new word in there. Put something in there. And of course, if you want to say something and you think, oh, I want, how do I say I am, I am whatever, ask us. We are happy to help. Happy to let you know. So uh, in today's audience, we have a robot, we have Godzilla, we have a plane, we have a computer, a pencil, a star, which is pretty cool. 
So you're all fine. You're using this pattern just fine. And again, if you have questions, just let us know at any point, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Now, we've been sticking with watashi. Watashi, 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 watashi. So, you can change that though. The pattern isn't watashi wa bides. The pattern is a wa bides. And remember how I told you there's none of that conjugating business with first person, second person, third person, the I, the you, the he, the she, the it, the they? It's true. The death doesn't change at all. It's awesome. So I am looking at the sentences that just came up. And I'm going to say, Kaori wa hoshi desu. And, you know, I should be more polite because, you know, I don't really, I don't really know this person. So I'm going to add the san on there. Kaori san wa hoshi desu. So you can throw anything in the front of there. Doesn't matter. As long as it's a noun, we can stick it in there. So uh, we've got kawaii, and it's just a fun word. It's a fun word to say. And it is, it is used in Japanese. This is a talk for another time. But the word, the way that we use cute in, Jap in English, I feel is much more restricted than the usage of cute in Japanese. I think in English, cute is more a physical description, whereas Japanese, I feel like it can describe non-physical things, a situation, um, the way that someone acts. And But it's just a fun word. So let's practice a little bit more. And let me know, what, what do you think is cute? Let's drop out the watashi. We're done with that. And tell me, what's cute? Let's fill in that blank with na 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 wa kawaii desu. What do you think? Usagi. Yeah, rabbits are cute. I agree. Usagi wa kawaii desu. Kao-chan wa kawaii desu. Of course, of course. Inu wa kawaii desu. Now, when you're typing, when you speak, it, it is the wa. But when you're typing, make sure that, and it, it, you know, you'll get used to this. Those of you that are still getting used to typing, you want to push that W, but uh, don't forget, it is the HA character. We say WA, but it is HA. Iruka, dolphins. Now, as people are typing out answers, you might be wondering, uh, so Michael's typing with spaces. Should I be doing that? The answer is, I'm only putting spaces in here to make them clear. When you read natural native texts, there will not be spaces. The only time you see spaces is when you, well, not only time, but one of the big times you see spaces is when you're reading books meant for children. And one of the reasons I do that is to help them see the chunks inside the sentences because kids learn particles in a surprisingly similar way to how we do it and they want them to see where the particles go and there's kind of a flow you know particles get hooked onto words and the way you speak is kind of like a, a word plus a particle and then the next word the next particle and so forth and so you'll see in children's books those spaces coming in but and also with kids books there's usually no kanji and as you will find out if you haven't already kanji is a really good way of breaking up words to make it easier to read. 
And when you're doing something like a beginner's lesson and you're using only hiragana, only katakana, excuse me, having a long list of just kana characters is, is tricky. All right, let's keep going. Now, we are stepping away ever so slightly from the Ewa Bides, and we're going to swap it up a little bit. Now, these have all been positive sentences. When I say positive, I don't mean positive in the good sense. I mean positive in the, this is a positive statement. It's a yes statement. So what do we do if we want to say that something isn't this? If we want to say A is not B, or I am not B, we want to negate it. There's a really simple way to do it. And here it is. It does make the sentence a bit longer. But if des is your yes, is your positive statement, then no is your negative. Uh, sorry, no is of course your negative. Janai des is the negative form. Now, some of you that already know this might be thinking, well, what about these other forms? And I will get to those. But for now, let's focus on this, Janaitis. So if we say A wa B, Janaitis, we're basically saying A is not B. That's all. A is not B. Now, this works for not everything. This works for nouns. And adjectives start to change things a little bit. We're not talking about those today. So for these negative sentences, we're going to focus on A is always a noun. We're also going to focus on B being a noun as well. So if I... I might say something like this. Watashi wa inu janai desu. I'm not a dog. You know, as someone else put, I'm a pencil. I'm not a dog, I'm a pencil. So if we've got two nouns that we're working with and we say this first noun is not the second noun, it's not, then we can use this janai And so the example that you see on the screen, watashi wa kanada jin. Kanada is Canada. And then jin is a suffix used for, you know, people from different places. You know, Nihon Jin is a Japanese person. America Jin is an American. France Jin is uh, someone from France, a French person. And as I noted, you know, with these negative ones, adjectives, something else happens. You know, Japanese can be really simple in some cases, but not in all cases. And adjectives get a little trickier. We're going to push that to the side, not worry about it today. But let's try this just a little bit. This is probably the last thing we'll practice today in terms of sentence patterns. So let's go one more time and tell me something you are not. Tell me something you aren't. And let's stick to nouns. Let's not put adjectives in there because adjectives will not follow this pattern except for certain situations. So let's just stick with nouns. Tell me what you're not. So let's see what we have. So let's see, uh, Dani says, Watashi wa kusuri janai desu. I am not medicine. Jimu is not a teacher. Tifo is, as I thought, not human. Demi is not a fake. Znuni is not a Japanese person. Onikis is not a dolphin. But you guys are doing just fine. 
you're doing it exactly the way uh, it should work. And Hadrian's sentence is a good example of why, oh, and you have two, you have two choose in there, you only one choose, uh, is why learning kanji is not something I'd recommend now, but one day when it's time for you to learn kanji, you shouldn't be afraid of it because it lets you take correct but crazy sentences like that and rewrite it in a way that people can actually read. Because when you see that, it's like, where does one word start? When does one word end? It's just, it's really hard to break up those units. And by the way, uh, I'm sure there's some of you that are, I've just gotten started. I, 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 I don't know what, I know what kanji is. It terrifies me. I can't read these. Inside of our Discord, if you ever see someone type something that's in kanji, you can react to it with the little Kalchan. It's got a little question mark on it. And Kalchan will jump in there and let you know uh, what it is. And so feel free to use that whenever you'd like. If you see kanji, but you're not quite sure what the reading is. Okay. Let's keep going. We've got about 15 more minutes before we wrap things up. So we've got these two patterns down so far. You already have two different Japanese sentences you should be able to use. We have our ewa bides, and then we have the negative form of it, ewa bijanitis. And again, don't worry, I am going to talk about the other forms of janai in just a minute. And again, when I want to circle back to that first thing I said when we started talking about translating and how dangerous it can be. It's a useful tool, but especially for a beginner, it can be dangerous because your desire to link up each word with another specific word can make things painful. And it's not just that some words might not link to any word in the English translation, it's also that the word order is kind of bonkers. You know, here in Japanese, you have watashi, I, okay, we're starting off with the same word, that's not too bad. The next thing is wa, and I'll give you a hint, wa is not in the, sen the English sentence at all. There's no word that represents it. So already, you, you've stopped and you're thinking, oh no, if I'm trying to translate, to, translate this in my head, I'm in trouble. But instead, if you see it and you hook onto those patterns, you are trying to understand it. Not, it's not abstract necessarily. You're looking at, you have a fixed pattern. You have that A, W, B, DES. And instead of trying to break up each word and saying, what does this word mean? If you see that W and then you see that DES later on, you say, oh, hey, it's that math thing I learned. It's A equals B. Okay, what's A? Okay, what's B? Those two are the same? Got it. I'm done. And then you don't fret as much as which, okay, which one comes, where do those verbs go again? And, and objects, where do those go? And I'm not quite sure. It's just none of that. It's the A, W, B, D, S. And you just drill that into your head. And later on, as you become a more advanced speaker or writer or reader, you will start to see these things as more individual units, and it'll be easier for you to break them up if you need to. But I don't think you do. Until you reach a really high level, I think a lot of Japanese, and this is the same way I taught English often, a lot of English you can teach as patterns, and that is sufficient enough to understand what's going on. Now, Let's talk about wa just a little bit. Wa is something that drives a lot of people crazy. It just does. And why? Wa doesn't exist in English, as I told you. And wa is what's called a article. And of the 13 minutes we have left, I'm going to try and spend about 10 minutes uh, talking about just this one thing. 
what is a particle? And we don't have particles in English. Uh, I'm not sure about other languages. But particles are, they're these little grammar bits that help identify things in the sentence. And there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of particles. Uh, if you've studied beyond this, you've probably heard of other ones, but there's a bunch. And some of them, not wa, but some of them often have a translation that can be attached to them. Some of them do. Many of them don't. And so I would like you to not translate wa. Instead, I don't want you to think, I don't want you to think this. I don't want you to think, what does it mean? I'd rather you think, whoops, I'd rather you think this. And I think this, I think this will help you out more. Instead of thinking, what does it mean? Think, what does it do? What's its job? And particles each have a job. And there's, there's two things about this job uh, that you need to keep in mind. Particles, and often a sentence will have multiple particles in it. Today, we only have one. For the next several lessons, we'll only have one particle. Particles are, I'm going to call them this, and I want you to remember this. And I'm going to ask you every single week we do this, and I'd like to hear this back again. So listen to what... Particles are signposts. You know, it's a sign. Say you're looking for a house. You want to buy a house. And you're looking for houses on sale. And, you know, you see a house and there's a sign with an arrow pointing to the left and saying, for sale. That's a signpost. Is it part of the house? No. Is it giving you information about that house? Yes. Similarly, when you walk up to a building and there's a sign that's pointing to the, this door and says entrance, is that sign part of the building? Not really. Is it helping you describe something, you know, in that building? Yes. It's a signpost. And they kind of sit to the side of something and they help describe that. That's what particles do in Japanese. As they say, hey, hey. You know me, this is what I point out. I point out these types of words. And it's always the word, whoops, it's always the word to the left. So if we have a particle like this, if there's a word, A, and in fact, let me, let me write watashi so we have an actual word. The particle points left. The particle points left. So if we go to this, sec this sentence that we've been doing over and over again, if you look at this watashi wa call this. You're going to see that wa, and your head's going to say, hey, that's a particle. What's that particle linking to? Is it linking to wa? Is it linking to call? Where is it going? It always goes left in Japanese. It hooks on the left thing and says, hey, this is what this is. And the wa particle is called a topic marker. It is, as it says, it describes the topic of whatever you're talking about. It describes the topic of whatever you're talking about. So if I say, watashi wa kao desu, what's the topic of my, my sentence or of my discussion? It's, it's me. It's watashi. Wa does not mark the subject. We will talk about subject markers many lessons later. You would think that that's a basic concept. You'd say, don't you need to know subjects at the beginning? You actually don't. Subjects are not as common in Japanese as you think. Usually it's topics. And topics also cover the subject as well. So this wa is whatever you're talking about. Whatever you're talking about. I'm going to give you one more example. Kyo refers to today. It means today. 
and nemui means sleepy. So if I say kyo wa nemui desu, I'm not, again, this isn't the subject, I'm not saying today is sleepy. I'm saying, oh, this topic we're talking about today, I'm sleepy. So it has a slightly different meaning, excuse me, than what we consider a subject. I just wanted to mention this to you just so you had it in your head. But at the end of today, I don't want you to leave with a full understanding of wa because you won't. I want you just to say, oh, that's a that's a particle, it's a topic marker. And the wa topic marker is pronounced wa. Actually, I should probably write that in Romaji. Nope, there. There we go. When you have a wa topic marker, it's pronounced wa. And that's just, it's the rule. That's just the way it is. But all you need to know is this is just part of that pattern that we learned. It's part of the a wa b des or a wa b janai des. That wa is just part of there. And yeah, Michael mentioned it was a topic marker, but you don't need to worry about that right now. You just want to get some basic sentences down and later on you'll get a stronger feel for what a topic particle or a topic marker is and for what it can do, what other things it can do. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention to you is, here we go. We talked about those negative sentences earlier. Let me type it back up for you just so you have it there. Watashi wa neko janai desu. Now some of you, if this was a classroom and you wanted to score some points in front of your other classmates, you might be thinking, oh, I can tell the teacher they're wrong. They made a mistake. They forgot to mention something. We all love those opportunities, right? When you're confident that you, you know, know something that the teacher hasn't mentioned or they made a mistake and you want to look smart. And I bet for some of you, that sensor is going off right now, and you're correct. This is not the only way that you can use the negative form. Some of you have seen this one as well. Or this one. Or This one. And all of a sudden you think, oh, this is much, oh, wait, that's too many things for my brain in one day. There are different levels of politeness that we can use in Japanese. And honestly, it's not something you need to worry about when you're first just dipping your toes into, you know, the Japanese language. You'll get to it and it will make sense. It's not as hard as it sounds, but this particular A is not B pattern that we're learning, it's actually changed. It has changed in the time that I was a student to now. You know, languages are living and sometimes grammar rules change. People start using something that they didn't use before. And when I was a student many years ago, this was the way I learned it. And this is not wrong at all. It's just a bit more polite, a bit more formal. And these days, it is very common to hear the Janaidas version. It's very common. I've even seen, I use the Genki. Some of you are familiar with the Genki textbooks. And I use the first edition of the uh, Genki textbook many years ago. There's a third edition out now. I believe third is the latest. And even there, if you compare the first edition and the third edition, this particular lesson, when they're talking about this, they've changed the examples, not just the con the text of the examples, but the actual wording, because this uh, Janaides has become much more common. And you want to sound like a, you know, you don't want to sound like a textbook. You want to sound like a, a, a a natural natural person so for now for now just file these away in a oh these also exist but again 
you don't need to remember all this at this point. But there are these other ones. Dewanaides, Ja Arimasen, and Dewa Arimasen. The only reason I am bringing these up now is to point out that these particular ones, Dewanaides and Dewa Arimasen, the Wa in there is that Wa, it's the same Wa that we heard a minute ago, where it's typed out as a Ha, an H-A sound, but you pronounce it as Wa. But store that to the side. Your goal today, as I said, you're walking away with Ewa Bidas and Ewa Bijanidas. And that wraps it up for us. Um, if you go through these lessons on Renshu, you can uh, tap on them to listen to the sentences. And you can hear, you can hear those wahs come out. But you've got, you've got me right now, so you can hear. I'll read the first one for you. Watashi wa kao desu. And the second one, I'm going to say it more slowly than would be natural, but just so you can hear it. Watashi wa Ningen de wa, there's the wa, de wa arimasen. Watashi wa ningen de wa arimasen. But again, this is what we're doing. This is what we did. A wa b this. And that wa thing, that topic particle, we're going to get to it more and more. You'll be sick of it, and it will become second nature to you once we have gone through, you know, a few more lessons. But before we end today's uh, lesson, any questions about this particular pattern? Okay, uh, I think we're good then. Well, thank you so much for coming to today's lesson.